so class field trip to pet smart for a project okay okay so if we got like a big like tupperware soup container like a tall cylinder kind of thing okay. and then put the soil and the worms in it and then bought a flower from home depot and like put it at the top of it kind of and then when the rock or like when the ants go worms Whatever we're using, whatever those things go are. to a certain <laughs> thing that we have like set up. That'll be that'll be your final exam for the class. Like, what, what was the you animal? Um, <laughs> you want to say it? I can you got it. it. You got it. Keep okay. rolling. Um, so then have like a they go to a certain center within the soil, then water is dispensed on top of the flowers. Because hmm. we were brainstorming, we really can't think of anything like beneficial that the worms would be like I'm dying to have this one thing because they can't have too much water or the soil like will pull up on uh -huh. so we thought like okay because our projects are different than other people so we might not be able to have the same type of feedback uh -huh. but if the feedback was like mutually beneficial for basically the environment and not necessarily the worms themselves but like the flowers and stuff like that so could that be something yeah so, maybe I think you could do um what if it was, um, I don't see why it has to be one long thin one. You could have, cause you could have a couple different sensors in there and they could each be hooked up to like one of these flowers. Um, well, we wanted and just to have, have like it a little array of them. A little bit like, the reason I wanted to do a tall thin one uh -huh. is to keep the space relatively small so that we could see them. Are you going to see the worms? I mean, I think that could be cool. Because even in the thing we have now, like, they're, like, buried in there. Uh -huh. So it would be cool if it kind of contained, like, the circumference of it so that you could see, kind of see that they're in there a lot. What about, um, so then, you, yeah, you want something clear. Um, I just think that, because you don't have anything to compare the one flower against as, like, a singular thing. Um, and so I'm just trying to think of ways like if you had if you had a couple different flowers you could kind of see something like okay maybe they're over here more than over here or something like that. Um, you could make like a 2D ant farm. You just get two pieces of acrylic, uh, use some silicone caulk um, around the edges, um, make that. Then you'd be able to see them really well because you know you could keep it like this thin. Um, hey, what's up, guys? Hey, how are you? Good, good. Okay, do you think that is a better idea? Um, possibly. Just, um, just whenever you just have, like, this thing with just, like, the one thing, you're not gonna, um, something's gonna happen. It's gonna affect it. Yeah. But you're not gonna be able to, especially for, like, a longer term kind of thing, something that you don't get immediate feedback on, it's hard to see what effect it had. Um, so if you can think of ways for, if you do multiple things, something okay. like that. Do you yeah. think we should, we could do like, have two flowers like, and have one water, like if they're on that side and more like water to lot with water and then the other one do like kind of food color and water like, hmm. like um, the Nell did, do, or you can kind of measure a visible like uh, measurement in the color of the petals. Huh. Yeah, you could think of, of other different things you could do to the flower too, like also, you could have like some strings attached to the flowers, and they could like always face where most of the worms are, or something like that. Um, so you can like physically, you know, move them around along with like watering them, mm. something like that. Okay, how would keep what would we turn strings? Like how? It's so like if you get a servo and you just tie like a little like even a stick or a string to it. And then you can just like rotate. make the flower. Yeah, you could you could rotate the stem or just make it tilt one way or another, something like that. That could be cool. Yeah. Now keep in mind though, you'll be introducing a whole other living creature though. Um, just another thing to keep alive. Luckily, it's kind of a flower. It might not <laughs> well, be that. Don't yeah, it. It shouldn't be that hard, but yeah. just another thing to consider. Okay. Cool. Where are you picking up there? Filters, for fish. Ah, okay. Fish too? Huh? It's for fish. Cool. So what do you guys want to look at? What are you guys thinking about? The one three is three. Cats, um, right? Yeah. Cool. We're going to go her friend. Yeah. I wish I had a friend. <laughs> well here, let's, let's loop through 
You just kind of like <laughs> loop through s stuff together as a group. So like, what do we got? There's a lot of a lot of products that go to like keeping an environment station stationary. You know, like uh, homeostasis. Um, you don't want crazy things to happen, um, which can be a good way to start. <laughs> Cyclopes. It's for cyclops? I'm confused. Yeah, and so fish apparently have a lot of stuff to keep them going. There's all kinds of different things with them. Yeah, I wonder if fish are the things that people build the most like artificial environments. I think they do. Oh, look at the oh, one. Jeanette Yen was talking to me today and she said she she wants me to build her a gadget now. Oh nice. I yeah. was like, uh Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys will be in you guys will be a hot commodity to all the biologists. What if no, we did our thing in a fishbowl? Come on, let's look at them. Oh, there's the crickets. <laughs> So you'll only be able to see them, if you really wanted to see them, you're only going to be able to see them whenever they go to the outside. Okay, so like those little water balls? Yeah. Do they actually like live in that? I don't know. They have some. <laughs> um, I think they could live in it for a little bit. Yeah. Like I would, I could, if you took out a worm, rinse off the dirt, and toss it in there. I bet it would, it would live and it would just keep it from drying out. Uh, so it can live in there for a good amount of time, but it'll need to go back to the heat. Yeah. Um, but they're non-toxic. It should be all right to... Uh, should be. Are you thinking of different I just asked about the water bowl. In a water bowl? Well, like if you filled up this tank with those, those single colored oh, yeah. gel balls. Where did you get those? Uh, my mom gave them to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they use them for planters. Uh, people plant like flowers in them. It's like you have a vase and you just fill it full of those balls and it slowly releases the water. Huh. What? Albino. Look, the normal version? Albino version. Oh yeah, the cichlids, right? Yeah. They were researching the cichlids. I was wondering where my phone was when I was in my hand. Cool. So yeah, one of the weird things about the cichlids is like, they're like most of them come from this one lake in Africa where there's just hyper diversity. But there's diversity. like a lot of kinds of. But that's yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. That is weird. There's like something like you know like fifty thousand species. Oh my God. Super crazy. Africa. It's weird how cheap some fish are. Yeah, you know the two fish that I got were both a dollar and ninety nine cents. Well, like well look at these. These are fifteen cents. For like the babies of one fish are like four dollars and the adults are like 120. Yeah, and yeah. Like, look at these. Okay. Why is that one in that little cup? Yeah. Like, what do you think? I got it. I was wondering if he was like incapable of finding yeah. a way out. Yeah. Aww. Cool. Maybe they're loners. Wait, that's a koi. So that'll become enormous. So let's think. Let's uh, let's think about what are all the elements that the people are having to control right now for all of these fish. Water flow. Flow. Okay, so it's moving circulation. Well, they need something from the hide behind. The water. Huh? Oh, they need something from the hide behind so they don't get stressed. Because I know the, some the fish. Plants yeah, keep they them like, from getting stressed. Yeah, because oh. when I bought fish. The person who gave it to me like, need to buy something for the fish to hide behind or else they get really okay. stressed out. So they need architecture, yeah. I guess. They need chemicals to um, keep them, especially with like a saltwater fish yeah. or a freshwater yeah. fish. So what other things? Temperature, water. Temperature? Mm -hmm. Food? Obviously, hair. Like air? Oh, well, you said hair at first. <laughs> hair. <laughs> Gotta have a good amount of hair. I wonder if they need the substrate. I they don't need them. Like, do they need the rocks at the bottom? Those guys don't have rocks, Look but nobody cares about them apparently because they're 15 cents. <laughs> yeah, apparently. They're gonna not do much. Oh, does anyone have a laser pointer? I wonder if you test that out. That one's $32. Whoa, who? But they're such pretty goldfish, though. Why are they? They're fancy goldfish. 
But they're beginners, but they're 30. <laughs> Should we migrate to a new zone? Yeah. Like yeah. Which zone do you want? <laughs> well, <it's good. laughs> you should do that. What? Can you find our female VR, our ambient video for the day? <laughs> that sounds good to me. I've never done it. Hey, Charlie doesn't want that. This is moss ball. Ball of moss. You don't like that guy? He's pretty cool looking. This guy's like excited. Yeah, she looks really hyper. Yeah. I like these, these these little. If you want a more laid back lizard, there's some geckos. He looks very sleepy. Look at him. Where's the chameleon? He's on sale. Wait, look at him. And there was a rat. No, where was he? Yeah, he was laying down. And he was like, right between the rock and the wall. I was like, is he dead? But I looked at him and he was like, so happy. He's like on his back, like, <laughs> like passed out. I was like, hello? Are you alive? I don't see that. There he is in the back. Oh, I don't like anything white with red eyes. Do they have the red eyes? Oh yeah, he's a little... I like the way he stands on his hind feet. Look at them, they're cuddling. Yeah, those guys are pretty cute. They're little so fluffy cute. things. Oh my gosh, so I like guinea pigs. <laughs> oh my gosh, and there's a puppy! Uh, no. I've eaten a guinea pig before. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> in Ecuador. Uh, I've eaten a few funny things in Africa. Oh. They found a fashion bird to eat. I don't, I'm not Only 14 days? Yeah. Like, yeah. What does that like, mean? I think it's supposed to mean, like, it's well, not going to die in 14 cute. days. Oh, but so also, cute. like, yeah, the idea of someone being like, this guinea pig's not doing it for me. <laughs> Pretty weird. Oh, my God. <laughs> Too many backbones for me. I don't think there's anything in this. Man, some of these hamsters' habitats are awesome. They said there are. There are other guys in there. He looks like little furballs. Man, if you guys are worried about job security too, like, look at how much just junk people just toss, like, I need to drop $42 on my weird little rat yeah, thing, look at it, you know? Yeah. And there's nothing even, like this thing could have been made like, you know, anyway. 80 years ago. Uh, <laughs> whereas you guys are the future. You make your hamster wheel, like you guys are, you guys are just whipping out ideas that some dude in like 20 years is going to make like, you know, a couple million off of being like, it spins the wheel and then a light goes on. <laughs> and like, wow. And they're like, People brilliant. Yeah. Can I? Oh, I don't know. People don't understand animals, so they're like, I need to spend money on this thing. Yeah. They are crazy little guys. Yeah, I'm going to take a picture of them. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Where's the fancy? There's little, if you look closely, you can see little fur balls in there. Aww. They're cute. They're cute. They're cute. They're cute. They're cute. They're cute. Mostly active at night. Every close to them is always weird. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like little mice and stuff just get like cancer immediately. Really? My sister always had all these like gerbils and they just like they always died? get tumors. Aww. It's weird. I think it's like maybe like in human environments they exceed their normal lifespan by like, you know, like ten times. Yeah. And then like so they just get all these weird stuff. Oh. Aww. That's pretty good. Thanks for stopping by. Was there any last things you guys wanted to check out? I don't know if over here. Baby, thank you. Aww. 
<laughs> this is a good animal to me. Mm. It's not scaly, it doesn't hop around. Mm -mm. <laughs> I like, like how that people. one's got kind of circles on it. Hmm. Your crickets might like you, your worms might like you. Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, they come in small sizes. Oh man. Think, think how much smaller your worms are than these. Yeah, but they don't have any personality. <laughs> smaller is better, right? Your worms have a lot more personality than I thought they would. That, guy, that one was all like that crazy. That one was good, but the other one melted. <laughs> Cats won't melt. <laughs> you better hope not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at these worms! <laughs> Exactly. Oh, yeah. oh. That, that one. one is a fun one. Yeah, he's going to Yeah, he looks like he's a jumper. So, for your guys' cat project, yeah. where do you think you're going to set it up? I have two friends with cats. Okay. One is it closer to me than the other, but they're both pretty close. Okay. Uh, to my apartment, that is. Uh, and I was going to set it up just at their apartment, wherever they usually have their cat food, uh -huh. put it in there. Okay. Yeah. So, cool. And you'll be able to kind of keep it there, monitoring it yeah, for a bit? Yeah. I mean, both of them, I'm like, I'm good friends with, so they wouldn't mind. And I asked them both already, and they're like, yeah, go for it. Now, and what about, because you're not always going to be able to just be there Yeah, all exactly. The time. I was going to maybe pull up like a... Or just be there at certain times, like leave it there for a while for the cat to get like acclimated to it, and then hang there for like a few hours, or I could leave a video camera there, or ask yeah. my friend to take pictures of the cat going there. So I think I think setting up a good time lapse camera would be a really good idea. Yeah. Because um, it'll help you be able to like analyze it and yeah. see what they're doing throughout the day. Or yeah, like how long it takes them to kind of figure out what's going on. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, he's um, also thinking of putting like, this was like possibly like an added bonus if we had time. Okay. Like every time the food like turns or food for, like dinner or serve or, like say something to the cat like the, the gadget does. Uh -huh. Yeah. And see if uh, the cat like learns. Okay. You know, maybe if Do you guys have any questions? Lauren or Skylar says like, Did you serve little kitty? Like the cat is the one to its food. Later guys. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Unless you want to go to the digital media demo day. 2 to 5 p.m. Free food. Oh, oh poor little guy. Poor guy. I think a boy. Oh, he's so cute. I like you without an eye. <laughs> oh. oh my God. Was he born without it or did it feel like that? Yeah, so, yeah. His other eye looked, yeah, blind. No feet out of the other one. Yeah. I had a dog that had a crooked neck, and it was blind out of one eye. One day, just be out of both. Because, like, when it looked at you, it was like, always do that. Yeah. And then, but it was, yeah, I think it was just like, took a little while for it to. So, your project. Mm -hmm. Basically, just walks up and it gets its food. Uh, I don't know if I want it to be like a certain area, uh -huh. or if I want it like if I want to have some sort of like, like trigger. I guess that the cat could like recognize. Well, and so that's the problem with the the photo detectors. Yeah, is that the cat's not going to be able to get this feedback between like. Oh, I did this, and now so this you food mean thing. It's not going to recognize that the photo detector is, is what is providing it with food. Exactly. So how is it to learn? Exactly. So, like, if you had a thing where, what if it pulled something, and that triggered the thing oh, to turn? Oh, that's know? really cool. Because then it knows, like, okay, every time I bite this and like yank it a certain amount or It'll shake it a certain amount, food. then this thing will rotate. And maybe in the food tray, so you could do like a treat. So. Yeah, that would yeah. be really cool. Oh man, 
I can't go to the, you know, like the gravity powered one. I mean, I'm sure there's like a lever on it. Just put it, it, would, it wouldn't be mechanical. It, it would, wouldn't be any code behind it. You know what I mean? What do you mean? Like oh, you I mean? I literally just put tied like a toy to the lever and the uh -huh. cat pulls on a toy. I mean. Well, exactly. Is that, is that so, okay? like, do you want there to be code behind no, it? No, no, yeah, yeah. You gotta, you yeah, gotta. That's what I was thinking. That's where you gotta make your thing, um, like, digitally expressive. Okay. So, that's a good thing to think about is, like, okay, this could be implemented totally physically. What can you do with the computer digital. that you wouldn't, not just to make it digital, but what could you do that you wouldn't be able to do with just, like, a thing where a cat presses this, it opens up something like that? Um, so it could be separated, um, it could deliver stuff differently depending on how they interact with stuff. Um, you could, and because you guys still need to, so you, you'll have some sort of interaction. Okay, you have an input, you have an output, um, but you're still missing two elements from your projects. You need an extra thing from the environment that changes how your whole thing works. Um, and you also need some sort of overall rhetoric for your project. Um, it needs to be expressing something. Um, you could make it into like a little play and like film it throughout a night and whenever the cat does this that's how the story unfurls or something like that. Um, but you, you can build up something so it's beyond just a weird little like training tool. Um, so would, would adding the, um, the like audio or saying like, like yeah, like saying like dinner service something like that, would that, would that add the feedback that the cat needs or does it always know like if I do this then I get this? Well again, so it would be, it's going to notice when this food rotates around. Yeah. The audio may reinforce it when that's happening, but I don't know if with the photo detectors, if the cat's going to know that how it triggered those things. Yeah, like it's not if it's gonna know like I stood here. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe we could put like something on the floor, like a colored mat, and if we move the colored mat around. Maybe. And move the photo sensors. With yeah, that. maybe. Like oh, the photo sensors are like the spot uh -huh. X is over here. Yeah. But. But and of course. Um, I mean, you, you might just want something that it can kind of like tug at and play with. Okay. Just because, even if it's still using the photo detectors, something there so that it actually, you know, focuses on this one particular so spot. It doesn't happen to like just be walking by. Where the photo, you can put like a mouse underneath where the photo detector is. Or what are? about like a, what about like a pressure detector? There's, there's such a thing. Like if we put it yeah. under a mat and then whenever the cat stepped on it, mm -hmm. it would rotate because then the cat would know that it stepped exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. It could work. The thing is, it's um, learning will take place best with the creature doing some sort of purposeful action. So if you happen to step on something, like, you what? may not know like, oh, it's because I stepped on that and not because I was whistling a song that it caused that to happen. It has to be like, um, related to, I guess, like a very deliberate act. Yeah, exactly. So if, they, if you can get the cat like to do something out of their way, so it could be like to go to the top of this thing and then, you know, it'll trigger something over here. That'll probably reinforce it better than if they happen to be walking around and suddenly this thing starts spinning. Okay. Would the, having the, um, called little cat toy where the photo sensors are work for it? Like cat pulls, a like, cat runs towards the toy? It could, but, yeah. Like would the, pulling the cat toy maybe need to we be could, the maybe we digital? Could. Uh, put the like a toy like right on top of the photo sensor. Oh, so when it went up to the photo sensor, would also when it went up to the toy, it would also be blocking the photo resistors. I think that would be yeah, that's true. So, it was, like, a toy right so if it was if it was just hanging if, like, here were right in front of this photo detector, and whenever it batted it around, then because the, yeah. the photo resistor would pick it up. And yeah, that could work really well. Yeah. So then we could still use our photo resistor, but then we just would just have to have like a toy above it that yeah. when it played with that, the photo resistor would detect that. Maybe you two. Yeah, you're not having that. Oh my gosh, there's no way. Yeah, like there's so many. Well, there's a movie. Well, let's. I mean, we're at PetSmart. Let's look at. Let's look at all the uh, the things that they have to interact with cats already. 
This is, oh, this is dog. This is dog. Right? Dog dog. dog. Where's the cat though? Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. I wish I could stay that size forever. I know. <laughs> My friend's dog doubled in weight. You know that picture of the dog I sent you? Uh huh. She doubled in weight. Wow. And so, for the final parts of your thing, you could also be thinking about, um, you don't have to like turn it into like a play or something, but you can do something with. So you have you have like the stupid pet trick set up. You have cats doing something, you get something out. Um, on top of that, now you can think about like, okay, well, is there some way that this interaction will change something else in the user's environment? If the cat starts really learning it, maybe it'll do something to the people. Um, or it'll do something some other animals, or it'll like generate uh, some sculptures in the landscape or something like that. Um, so like, and if you can feed back into what the cat's doing, it could be even more interesting. Like maybe after a while of it doing this, the pole gets like taller, but it has to bat this um, okay. the little toy on. And so maybe it becomes like, it starts regulating the system. So the cat's, once it starts learning to like bat this toy and it gets a treat, then like the pole that, you know, the mouse and the sensor go higher and higher up and it just makes it more and more challenging for the cat. Um, so those kind of things, just changing, changing other factors in the environment to like add on to this interaction. This is kind of like teaching the cat to hunt, really. Maybe, you yeah. your food until you find this little mouse. Yeah. You can maybe hide it. The cat go, well, first I would assume hide it in plain sight for the cat to play with. And the cat kind of figures so out, like, yeah. I touch the mouse, get my food. And then maybe put it somewhere, like, less obvious, but not, like, uh -huh. in a drawer where the cat has to, like, really go looking for it. Yeah. Or, like, find this, you know, something. Or, what else do we do? Oh, this one has a dog, like if the cat does something wrong or something like that, then the dog gets food. Oh. I don't know if that would really bother the cat, uh -huh. though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or, hmm. let's see. Yeah, I keep thinking about it. Where's the cat section? I'm assuming it might be this one. Like, on the other, like, this is wrong with the cat. I think it's a cat toy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You could also have like a laser that kind of runs around the room and the cat has to chase it and the cat catches Exactly. It. Yeah. Then, can you do that? I don't know. Yeah. But I don't know how you could tell if the cat caught the laser. So, if let's say you had a camera mounted up somewhere. You can detect where this like bright certain color is pretty easily, um, and you can you control where the laser points. So maybe it'll be a computer vision problem. Um, you control where the laser points, so you know where it's supposed to be in the video screen, and then if the cat gets in front of it, it'll go away, and that's how you know the cat caught the laser maybe? No, um, because I feel like the laser beam would just be shining on the cat. Possibly. It depends where the um, where the laser's mounted. Well, we could just also buy like a like a rolling toy too. A toy that just like rolls around. Uh -huh. Have like attached to a string so it starts feeling like pressure on the string or something like that. Or the string gets like pulled out of the uh, or whatever it's attached to in the food skin. Hmm. But like, I'm sure they have moving points for that. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like all of that they do. Yeah. Let's see what those are. This is just food zone. Yeah, yeah, those are like clear, like little mice things. Yeah. What about? This one is a pole. Oh man! Five bucks, you could turn your cat into a little dinosaur. <laughs> There's this, which has different things. It's got a pole that might work, like it's on top of the food dispenser. Oh. Or and so yeah, you could always put an accelerometer inside the toy, and then it knows when it's getting bopped around. Oh yeah, or if it, or like when I said, if it's a moving toy and it stops moving, then it knows. You know what I mean? Like it's like oh maybe stop. Yeah. I feel like it'd be like yeah, because the cat are kind of hunting. You know, it's like yeah. it'd be like a hunting story. Like, they um. caught your prey and you're just. Like, your problem with that is going to be either the wire or making it wireless. Um, both doable. Um, could be tricky. I don't know how to make anything wireless. So they've got to make two components for this. So two output. You need, um, per the, the uh, assignment that I made you guys read three times. Yeah. You yeah, need three times. an input yeah. uh, to the animal, output to the animal, one additional input or output from the environment and then some sort of overall um, expressive change for your piece. So the additional output may be us, like the thing does something to alert like us, like the owners of the cat, this will make it happen, would that be an additional output you think? Maybe. Or should it be something else that happens to a cat based on its behavior? Um, I'm going to say if it's an output, um, it should either be something that that changes largely in the environment, and it shouldn't. It should be part of a separate input or something. Um, they do something else. It's not just like, okay, the dog gets an input, and so then I flash a light and I buzz something. Um, it should it should be kind of a separate component uh, for it. I just want you guys to to go beyond just the one feedback loop and introduce some other factor that turns it into kind of this overall um, work that, yeah. that's a different environmental construct like that it wouldn't normally be able to play with. Probably a row but like maybe like light or dark outside, uh -huh. something different happen. Exactly, okay. yeah. So Easy, yeah, yeah. Really? Totally, totally. Huh, let's see. Make the cat's meowing, make the cat is not meowing, so happens. Yeah. Okay, kept quiet. Then, I'm oh. trying to think of it. Output. Um, can we maybe have like a water dispenser as well? Like the cat meow that took that off and then that maybe. catches what is, the toy. What is the thing is, I don't think, so water is not as much like, like food and treats, like animals would go after all the time. Water, there's water like, like you gotta like, you know, you gotta, you gotta be depriving them to get them to be like, oh water, <laughs> and that gets a little weird. I would never do that, yeah. <laughs> What if like if it's dark outside, like it turns it off? Sure, that could be something. But I think it could be even more interesting than that, you know. Like maybe it goes extra quick during the the day or something. Because we can brainstorm ideas over time. I feel yeah. like there's definitely something to do to it if you're thought about it. You know, yeah. Take yeah, and that, that's part of this. Like the first thing is just start getting some of your things built and test these interactions okay. to make sure you can actually get your cat to, to interact and have the machine respond. Would you like, for like our prototype, if we decide yeah. not to use photo resistors, which I guess we could use photo resistors, mm -hmm. um, anyway, um, would you want us to have photo resistors on Thursday? Or do you, if we decide you, you need to have to something, to have something stuff. working, okay. demonstrate that it can work with the animal too. So okay. if you can't bring your animal in, oh, you, um, you or should or try to, or you, you should, you should try to get like, that actual cat to like, I mean, just put a photo resist, put a mouse, a little fake mouse hanging in front of the photo resistor and have it make a light go on or off whenever yeah. it bats it. Do that shouldn't be very hard. Like, uh, you should get the cat to move and just like videotape. Okay. Um, but then bring the thing in for the class so we can actually test it out ourselves. Exactly. But like, you know, the main problem I want to avoid is like, um, 
like with like Larry's project, for example, like in theory, like the dog could step on the thing, but like we never even like tested the dog actually stepping on the thing. And there's a lot of stuff that happens um, where it's like, oh, I didn't think about X. Um, you know, we put it 10 feet high because that's where humans like to bat things, but you know, the cat can never reach it. Uh, things like that. So I want you guys to actually demonstrate that the animal is doing something and you can get a response out of it. Cool. Sounds good. I'll think about it. Cool. cool. I don't have anything else to work on, so I can Perfect. brainstorm up. But I'll ask which one of my friends is available tomorrow night, I guess, for us to do this. Perfect. We need to have this yeah. Thursday. And it shouldn't be that hard. You've already demonstrated all the parts. You just need to really test it. And this testing should help you think about how to flesh out your project more. Also, maybe we don't need to buy a cat toy. I'm assuming people no, with cats. Can. That's true. Toy. Yeah. Or you could make it, I'm okay. sure. Yeah. That'd be really easy. We're going to say if I can just get a piece of cloth mm -hmm. and ball it up, add it to it. <laughs> Do we want to go to the all electronic store? They are open late over there. That's it's weird. Like I had no idea they were open that late. That's the only place I can go to. Yeah. That works. I'm still thinking about our second input now, but... Mm -hmm. Something that like correlates. What? Something that like correlates, not something like totally random, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, something that makes sense with the, the rest of it. Ooh. I'm thinking of what we Correlate with food besides a toy. Or like something as a result, we just kept it going. Like something as a result of like when the cat was in front of the photo resistors, the photo resistors alerted that contraction to move, providing the cat with food, which in turn... Uh, when the cat goes to eat food or something, or once the food is the bowl's empty, maybe like a, a treat shows up somewhere else. Yeah. Like, ta-da! They like respond a, like to other laser, things than food. Like yeah. a laser point somewhere, which also responds to like a, another, a new toy or something. Yeah, they do respond to lasers, because I guess they want to catch it. Yeah. What else do they respond to? But it, Sound or um, like probably sound. I think mostly they get scared of them, but maybe it's yeah, like a like. Yeah, I don't a, think you should like scare it. Cause it's not gonna yeah. come back. But you guys can make things move pretty easy. Yeah. So you can get a servo, make it wiggle around something else in the environment. Okay. Uh -huh. We can do that. Or we could put this thing on a giant servo and have to catch its own food. And be like, yeah, oh. I can't get it. <laughs> And then it has to catch something else. Well, it'd be kind of interesting if somehow, once it triggered it, there was like a timer for it to actually be able to catch the food. Oh, okay. So like, it does something over here, and then suddenly this mouse starts moving across the floor or something, and it has to go catch this mouse before like, I don't know, it goes into this other secret hole where it's locked up. Um, and if it wants it to come out again, it has to, you know, go touch the button. And then, once it catches that, then it releases the food. So you get this kind of like double layer. Um, but I'm not sure if the cat will be able to figure that all out. But who knows? Uh, I guess we can experiment with the cat. We can yeah. change our path you a little bit afterwards. Exactly. After our prototype is turned yeah. in. Okay. Yeah, I'm not of sure, course. As long as we have the main thing is I need to see that you guys can actually interact with your creature. Okay. Um, like make it your gadget action. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because there's going to be all kinds of weird things that come up, um, but you need to be able to, like, at the end of the class, be like, look, I have this thing, and my cat can play with it in some way. And it, it, it knows what the cat's doing in some way. It can respond to the cat in some way, um, even if, like, other parts of it broke and went weird. Um, the main thing is we need the, the animal to be a part of it. Awesome. Well, cool. happens if our cat doesn't learn it on time? You just leave it there overnight, honestly. Yeah. So do you have do you have something to, to record it? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Cool. And something that can record overnight? She shows a really nice video camera. Okay. I'm going to have it plugged into it so it doesn't die. Okay. Uh, yeah, it should work. But then, and, like and what does it record too. on? Because even, even, you know, a really nice video camera, depending on what it records on, it can only record like two, so three much. hours. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. I'll check out what it records on. Okay. I think this one's like a digital one, so you 
has like a certain like my memory space. I don't know. It's not like this is from like cassettes or anything. Uh -huh. I mean, but sure, we can change the resolution and make it last longer. Sure. But even if we had a camera that recorded it for like three hours, uh -huh. like, a lot of, like a really long movie to watch to see if I can. You can fast forward through it till you see things moving around. Actually, I know this one can do that because we made a movie back in high school and we filmed like the sunset from like the house and then we filmed it overnight and then like a sunrise into like a cool. montage and it didn't run out of film space. Right nice. Now. Like, okay. Perfect. Good. Yeah. It took forever for us to get to download on the computer though. Uh huh. <laughs> it's like, I've got like almost a terabyte of memory. Uh -huh. Cool. But yeah, that'll help you analyze if it can actually play with the thing or not. Okay. Yeah, that's good. We can fix. Cats are pretty intelligent. I feel like it'll yeah, figure out. And they give some good. I mean, those things were playing with all kinds of stuff. Oh yeah, they get really hyper. So I'll look up like what cats like freak out over. Yeah. And what they like. I mean, it's like movement and movement with sound. When two things layers. happening at once work too. Like I don't know. Say. Oh, maybe it has to like pull the cat toy really quick and doesn't run away. It gets sprayed by a spray bottle or something. Hmm. Um, so no, they don't like human spray bottles. I know that. Uh -huh. know that. What if? Um, what if we had like a sort of game like two toys? If it touched one toy with the photo resistors, it would get food. If it touched another toy, something would occur that it didn't hmm. like. Yeah, it would get sprayed with water or something. Yeah. Or if it touched something that's not its own, like it touches like a stock, but burners, but mm -hmm. oh, don't touch the box. Oh. I don't know if it would be able to tell the difference. I'm gonna say that's yeah. tricky. What would be interesting is if you could, if you could abstract that to like, you could pick out anything in the room and somehow it gets a punishment or not, but that would be way too difficult. Um, <laughs> that would be like little things that was on everything. Yeah, exactly. Um, I could um, put, you could just make sure it's a really clean room. Or mm -hmm. what if it like went after the treat before? Like, what if the photos are up here, but it like put under and took the treat, and then maybe there'd be like a loud noise in the spot that would like scare it. So unless it touches the toy, it'll get the food. But if it just goes for the food, well, I mean, we could even ask like. I guess Warner Scholar, like, do your cats have any bad habits? And every time a cat does that, hmm. like, something bad happens. Loud noise. Break that cat out of uh. bad habits. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> would that would that be like a good like a good extra input slash output? It's getting there. Okay. Um Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's good we're asking you this. Yeah. I think yeah, yeah. You're getting there. Um I think maybe if the um, if you can go from like cat wiggle something to like food gets dispensed mm -hmm. to like maybe cat has to do something in particular maybe the cat and has to you know it's like it, and put it somewhere? I don't know maybe it has to hit the blue thing and then the or blue thing and then the pink thing okay. um, but if it does I don't know do either yeah um, could that also be part of our project like we tried to teach the cat this, but it ended up failing, and sometimes the cat did it. Like, it's not learning. What if, like, as a result of, like, the food moving, a laser, like, appears and, like, goes somewhere, the cat has to follow the laser in order to find a cat that she could end really not know. So I would focus less on... You guys aren't scientists here. No. You're, um... You're That's media artists. And so you don't want, I don't think you want to, I wouldn't even think about it as training. I wouldn't focus on, we want to train a cat to do this. Unless, because training and learning is going to take a really long time and a lot of dedication from you guys. What you want to do is you want to find something that the cat can do and respond to. Then you want to build on top of that. Okay. So that's going to be your canvas. And from there... You're going to be like, okay, well, we know the cat always does this and this, but now we're going to make it so that it, um, by doing this, it controls the projection of the editing of the show Matlock behind it 
And this is, and somehow these feed back to each other or something. It's basically like something interesting that, like if you were to just watch it, they're like, oh, it's really cool versus like, oh, cat eating food. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. That something, good. something that's going to be interesting for because okay we know that you know we can train animals um after a while it takes some work and stuff like that um that's not gonna be that interesting but taking taking some sort of uh response that you can use that becomes like one of your palettes um for your overall painting um and so you're going to use that and that's going to be what you're creating this work with then there's kind of two things you can think about. Getting the cat to do something that's interesting to watch because um, it's an unusual or weird behavior, okay. um, or something that's interesting because it gives the humans a view into the life of the cat that they wouldn't normally be able to see. Okay. Um, what if in some way, what if in some way we can play a game with the cat? Exactly. Like, as a result of it getting the food, like, on some digital screen, it pops a yeah. red checker into the what? thing, and then we can play checkers with it. This is very strange, but completely out there. What if the cat did a little mini soccer ball and has to, like, get it in the middle, like, five times before it hit it? Before it hit it. Mm -hmm. But then that's... So that's tricky. Um, but it's tricky because animals have a hard time counting. Or just, like, getting the ball at all. Like, oh, got it in there. Uh -huh. like, food. What about like extra yeah, I don't know. If you can work out a way for like, let's say the cat starts tugging on this thing, and somehow you control some sort of game thing that tugs back. Um, would it be okay in some if sort we were way. actively engaged with the cat, or does it have to be completely digital? Like we can have. Sure. Um. It depends. You need a completely digital, you need a digital agent, you need an animal agent, and you can also have an optional human agent. Okay. Could that be part of the extra? Life? Totally. Totally. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Oh, I just want a concrete idea. <laughs> um, I can think about it. I feel like yeah. we're really close. You're close, yeah. So start, start, getting, start getting this interaction, and then from there, start painting sketches. You know? <laughs> Got it. Is my metaphor working? <laughs> yes. Okay, it good. Is. Cool. <laughs> you look antsy. You guys should go go yeah, electronics. Yeah. Unless there's other other things you can look at here. There's I still think something would be interesting if you could have something on the cat. Yeah, we always got my dog in clothes. She loved them. It was weird. And they were like, your poor dog. I'm like, she likes them. Oh. She cold, she loves like Christmas sweater. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm. I don't know what we could put on the cat, too. Uh -huh. We could put like, what on earth is that? Oh, it's a bird. I guess it like goes around. It's like, no, it's not. not. Is it? I think it's a bomb. Yeah, I think it's just be like a bomb. Yeah, it's going be funny. Okay. Demonstrate this too that we're on our way to. No, 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 because oh, okay. you're not supposed to be on your way. You're supposed to have this part done because yeah. the semester's ending. Yeah. Thanksgiving is coming. I know. <laughs> and for we. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we have a photo resistor that we can use. So you want us to have our project pretty much by Thursday. I want you to have your interaction by Thursday. I want you to have your stupid pet trick by Thursday. Okay. Yeah, make it intelligent. Too. Exactly. Uh, then you have a month to make it intelligent. That's good. Yeah. Once we just get this part, like, well, this part's easy. Exactly. All we have to do is the photo receptor. Which you already know how to work, so. Yeah. Yeah, I like the idea of, I think you'll get a really good response out of, like, a dangly thing that's right in front of the photo receptor. Yeah, I feel like I the photo receptor, while it's not detecting light, since the thing's, like, right in front of it, uh -huh. Fine, and then it's like, ooh, what was that? There was exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Like, yep. it's like if, if this is like the toy yeah. and the photoresistors are coming this way, yeah. if the cat's right here moving it, the photoresistors are going to be disturbed by the fact that it's in front of it. So yeah. that'll just touch. Yeah, but I would say even just... So, where's that roll? So if this is your toy... And like even just like a photoresistor so, like right here? Yeah, if her hand, if her fist is a photoresistor... Like this thing just dangles right here, and it, it's normal resting positions right in front of it. That you'll get a really good response from because if you can put something touching the photoresistor, even if it's like just ambient light, you don't even need like an extra light like that. Oh, I you'll see. get a it's really like good. Front of it. okay. Yeah. Because we don't really need the light then. Yeah, I don't think we do. That's okay. You probably won't as much. Yeah, if it's like touching. Awesome. Cool. Seriously, I saw I read an article saying chihuahuas. Um, you want some more? Dachshund and Jekyll's and Terry's are actually more aggressive dogs. Huh. But it was like the like, pit bulls and stuff like that were a little more aggressive because of like the severity of the dog. Huh. Apparently like one in five dachshunds like attack. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thinking of games that you could do, so once you have this interaction, there's a way that the human can start like playing, yeah. playing with, the, with cat. the cat. So instead of like normally you play a game with your cat where you start like teasing it like that, yeah. it is something where you already have it doing some sort of weird action, yeah. and then you can start tweaking this and get this like weird meta game on top of it. That could be really interesting. Okay. So, as always, you're looking for things that you could. Do with the I computer that you wouldn't be able to do with just mechanics. I know, okay. You know those edge sketch? Uh huh. Okay, what if somehow we had like two strings tied to each of the knobs? Okay. And there was some way that when the cat would do something, one of the knobs would like move and thus create a picture. Oh. Yeah, it's like cat art. So it would be cat art. Yeah. It would have to do something so like after its food. After it got its food, something would have to happen in order for it to like tug the string. Mm -hmm. And uh, I maybe it like <laughs> prints it prints the picture for the person with the cat. Maybe yeah. I don't know. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool to do that. <laughs> anyway, because <laughs> I like don't know him. Uh, anyway. I think most people sound a little drunk when they shout your last name. Yeah, but like, <laughs> that's true, but like, anyways, okay, um, yeah, but that could be really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could, be, that could be cool, right? Yeah. Kind of, really have to exactly. like our transition between how, yeah. like how we can make the edge of the sketch Yeah, like how, why it would want to pull a string. Sure, well it can just be, it can just be part hey, of... You can track the cat doing whatever it's, it's doing and how it's playing. And then you can have this. The cat cam thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what was it? Is the cat filming something? There's some, at, at UGA, they, they put some cameras on, like, cats. Like, yeah. And then, had them film like just their daily life. There's one like fighting a possum, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. We could have the camera turn off and on based on playing mm -hmm. straight up your wireless equipment. Uh, or it just records. Are you talking about putting the camera on the cat? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you need a small camera. Or it could be. Um, or a big cat. Like when you. The cat pulls a string and. Doesn't film until the cat has pulled the string. It's not just like filming. Like, so you remember the, the some of the cat artifacts I showed you? There was the one where it kept changing TV stations yeah. until the cat was right in front of it, so the cat kind of gets to choose what it does. Okay. There's a project where these people have these monkeys, and they have this big touchscreen display for the monkeys, and it shows them video that the monkeys actually like. The monkeys have these little camcorders that they just run around with. But then the monkeys can actually like touch some of the video and they end up editing their own videos. So you can have it some way where like the cat is editing its own experience and at the end you get like, here's a video edited by the cat. Uh, oh, that could be cool. kind of interesting. That could be 
be really cool. That seems very abstract. We could have it so when the cat pulls a string, the feeder just keeps spinning until the cat walks in front of the photo sensors and it stops. Mm. If the cat's like, and then if the cat doesn't like it, maybe it could like back up and it'll keep spinning again and gets towards it. Like, ah, uh, I don't know if that would. I don't know. Be That'd be something for you to actually like test, test out. Test out with later. the cat, see yeah. if it would notice that. Yeah. That dog. Yeah. Oh my. He's just dragging her across the floor. She has to <laughs> spray her with that swifter stuff. Yeah, your goal oh, is. She's a kitty. Here's your very concrete goals for now. Yeah. You need to show that your cat can interact with your system. Yeah. Um, you need to demonstrate that, document it, then start thinking about how you can make this system interesting. Okay? So but for Thursday, get your cat to interact in as many ways as you can um, because there might be something weird. You might discover something way better. So try a little dangly thing idea. Yeah. Try your, your proximity thing. Yeah. See if it can figure it out. Try other ways of just manipulating the cat. Um, like, get a, do you have a laser pointer at all? I don't. Uh, my friend does, who has a cat. Has nice, a yeah. So try out things like that. Hook it into um, a servo motor. So laser pointers, most of them you have to press the button to turn on. You can't just like leave it on, right? Yeah. So what you can do is, you can, sometimes tape doesn't work as well. There's um, these like metal hose clamps you can oh. get at like Home Depot or maybe even at this like electronics store yeah. that you can just tighten and it'll just hold it, hold the button down for you and you can untighten it. And it'll, or zip tie, zip ties would work too. Yeah, it works. Um, you could do that and then just like, because you guys have made servos move, make the servo move around and see what the cat responds to. All kinds of stuff. You guys would be really made in the shade. Okay. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be really interesting. Yeah. Okay, it could work. Exactly. Cool. Sound good? Sounds yeah. perfect. Awesome. Yep. You gotta go to the, the catting board. Yeah. I really you like the edge of sketch. You really need to like get this that. cat with you. I really think that could be a really cool idea. We just have to think of another cool idea in transition. Like what from food would want it to like do something that would pull a string. Like Somebody's got this terrible idea to put giant paper all over the ground, have like paint cans, <laughs> cat stuff in the paint cans, like that could be cool. <laughs> all over the paper. It's like cat art. Oh my gosh. What if Little we poppers. Well you could um What if we had like two different colored lasers then like shine on the wall? <laughs> and it like shines like a green one and a red laser and like underneath it are like oh my god, what's this so cool on the end? Like lays down and like something, and like somehow it like it, it um, tugs on like either color, which would turn one of the knobs on the edge of sketch. Oh, so it would, like see um, if it could like favor a color. First of all, most of these cats and dogs are all colorblind. Are they really? I wasn't I think sure if that was a. They're pretty colorblind. Dogs see some color. I don't yeah. know about cats. They basically you have like red, green, blue. Yeah. They're all were like trichromatic they're all like dichromatic so it's like it's a very desaturated color and they can't differentiate between them. um and again that relies on a lot of weird learning and stuff whereas like it can produce art in ways that the cat's not actually like tweaking the etch-a-sketch you could have things like um if you do put down some sort of surface in between the trigger and the response and the way that it moves between these generates some sort of art. Well, we could, I mean, just have like the computer draw something based on cat something. He doesn't actually, cat doesn't actually have to physically draw anything. Yeah. Tugs on it a certain number of times, obviously. Yeah. But anyway, keep thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We were so distracted. <laughs> a little white dog. Aww. <laughs> okay, I'll brainstorm. Cool. Yeah, and feel free, run run ideas by me or whatever. Awesome. We will. Cool. We will. I'll put you on the Good, good. Go for it. Later, guys. Mm-hmm.